show how to serve files. Um, if you imagine having dozens of files in this folder, this might get a little tedious. Uh, though we can see how to do it, actually. So maybe that's worthwhile. You guys remember how we find all the files in a folder? Don't remember. Reader. Walk. Walk. And you give it a path. So let's just do dot. It takes all the stuff, which I don't expect you to remember, but it's in the docs. Um, and now we could create this inside of here. Do slash plus the name of the file. And then we would just put P in here. seem too easy. So we walk all the files in the current folder. Ah, there's an issue with this. We gotta skip directories. So it's uh, return nil. So don't want to add directories. That would add just slash and that would overwrite this guy and that would be weird. So now we're just adding files. Okay. So let's see what happens when I run this. Just remember in my folder here I have these Two files. Okay. So now I think if I go to, this still works, right? Why does it still work? Well, I visited all the files in the current folder, and I added the paths for them. And so now I can visit. So it, it added P here was home-cat.jpg. And so that's why this worked. We could also put a data after that. Yeah, that's kind of an issue. That's probably not what I wanted, right? That's cool. Now you can see the source code for my web server. Uh, probably didn't want that. Uh, so that's that's no good. Um, but that, does everybody understand why it did that? It added all the files in the current folder. The other issue is uh, a little more subtle, maybe. If I create a new file, if you copy that one, that works. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't write this code, but. Um, I can't reach this file because it didn't add it to start with. But if I restart the server, I can. So that's kind of an issue too. Um, because it only does it the first time it's run. Uh, so maybe that's a problem. I, I don't know. That's not much of an issue. I wouldn't run back to that one too much. But yeah, the, the serving all the files, so you could add filters, like I say, well, if it ends in .go, don't serve it, etc. That'd be all kind of cumbersome. So a better approach is there's a special kind of handler. So we're doing this file server. So if we go to the HTTP library, there is a file server in here. So you give it the root, and it will serve files out of that root. But root here is a file system. So they give us an example, HTTP handle slash file server slash temp. Okay, let me. So this serves all of the contents of the slash user slash share slash doc folder as an HTTP server. Um, so I can change this to be, uh, well I have it here, the slash, I can say file server, HTTP there, and give it a dot. Right, it's a handle, it's not a handle function, because this is a handler, it's not a function. Okay, um, let's see what that does. Cool, it still works. You can't go up a directory without that. You, you could. Copy that over to, please. You could go up a directory. Not there, you just went browser. No, good point. 
see what you're asking. No, you cannot. It stripped it. Um, so the file server protects you from that. The file server and the dir together. It makes it so you're not allowed to escape the directory that you handed. So definitely try to use file server when you can. Um, so. Not much different though. I mean, it's basically going to be doing the same file path walk in there and stuff. But this is just a, it does it at runtime. So if you had a new file, it'll pick it up and stuff, which is good. Um, and then sometimes it's necessary. So a common pattern to avoid this, oh, I'm including the Go file because it still does that. What we do is we make a folder. We call it, say, assets or static or files or something like that. And inside of here, you'd, you'd make your file, right? Um, actually, let me just rename our cat to uh, so assets slash, and then I put um, sorry, I said with a slash. And so now anything that goes to assets is going to go look inside this folder. So this is a super common pattern. Um, and now I'd have to change this to assets slash from cat. And then it should should work. So it didn't work. I think the reason why is I have to use strip prefix. Okay. So if I had done this, it would work. So let's see if that. this does is it removes part of the URL. So if we go look at the example, which shows it. You give it the prefix to remove and the file server and removes that from it. So this I think will make it work. So what, what this does is, and this maybe is a little hard to read, so what I'll do is break it up across lines. Um, so we create this dir, this is a file system, and that is rooted at this folder. Then we hand it to a file server that creates a handler that any requests that come to it will go to this folder. Okay? The issue is that when I go to slash asset slash home dash cat dot jpeg that comes in and then what it's going to do is it gonna, it's going to look inside this asset folder for another assets folder and then inside of that home cat jpeg but that's not what we want we want to remove that assets part of the url when this handler sees it okay and so that's why we use strip prefix and strip prefix will take out that part of it and hand it just this part of it and then it's able to find it inside of it so that's why we use script prefix here. Now this you can use with any handler, um, but we use a very common with the file server to uh, remove the initial part of the URL. This it seems weird that you get assets forward slash assets. How does that get in there? It's right here. Yeah, you've got assets home cat, so I call that, and then it looks to what's the handler for that, and then handler is 21, right? So it knows inside the assets folder just to look for home.cat, no? Uh, I mean, it seems like that's the way 20 is one. Wait, I, yeah, so when I come here, this doesn't change the URL. Yeah. So it hands this full URL to the handler. So let's say it hands it to the file server. What it's going to see uh, is 
I want slash assets slash home dash cat jpeg. And where is it looking? It's looking in this folder. So it's going to look for assets home slash cat jpeg. But what it doesn't have this in, inside of it, right? What it has is just home dash cat. I got it. I got it. So that's what it has in it. Uh, and so we have to remove the first part of the URL. We need to get rid of this part in order to see it, okay? And that's what we're doing with script prefix. So in the, in the source address, it, it's using that assets to know that that handler is... Yes. It's going to go out. Yeah, so think of the, the, the URL here as determining which handler to go to. But it does not modify the URL. In other words, this handler, he sees slash cat slash whatever. He doesn't see whatever comes after the cat. He doesn't see Chester. He sees slash cat slash Chester, right? And that's what we're doing here. This, this file server sees slash assets slash home dash cat engine. But since he's rooted in this folder, we got to strip out that assets part. Got so, it. Got it. strip prefix, we'll do that. Okay. Um, Thank you. But generally, this is. You know, you can like find this code and just copy it. Because there's usually one folder that you're using, say assets or static or whatever you call it, for all of your just regular files. And you, you have that folder and you put all your regular files in there and then you have one handler for it set up this way. And then that'll handle all the static files on your site. They're usually in a separate folder so that your code code doesn't overlap with them. So the, this means I can't get to main.go the way this is. I can only read things that are inside of assets. Now, they could be a subfolder. Um, I can create a folder under there, and this is very common, right? In assets, I might have a CSS folder. Uh, and then inside of there, I might create a main.css file. Uh, and say, well, back, you know, background red or something. And then inside of here, I might put in my head. Or href, yeah. Slash assets slash main dot CSS uh, style sheet and so on. You guys already wrote that, right? It's a long time ago. Um, so, so now I've added a CSS file and this should change to red, right? Didn't change. Oh, right, because the URL is wrong. It's not that, it's CSS slash main.css. It is in the CSS folder. So that matches that. So that should fix it. There, that's right. So you can use subfolders, but you can't go up. Okay? And that's what the dir there is rooting it at. We use strip prefix here with it. Any questions about that? So like I said, very common in your web app, this might be the first thing you do. Uh, with, with the app engine, there's, they have another way you can do this that you might want to use, but I, I tend to just use it like this um, and not use their. They have the ability to do the cloud serving for you. Uh, and the reason why is Go is plenty good at serving files. Uh, it, it does all the stuff in Go routines. The copies are very efficient. Uh, there's no real expense above and beyond just regular web requests. So. That's very different in a language like PHP and Python, <coughs> Ruby. Uh, taking a file, opening it, putting it into the program space, you know, into running in Ruby code, and then sending it to the user, not efficient. Uh, because Ruby's not good at doing that. Go, it's plenty efficient, so no, no issue with this code. Okay. Yay, uh, go! Yay. Yeah. Hey, yeah. what? Go ahead. Child language, so it's faster. Yeah, it's faster to run. Will you copy that over to you, please, sir? Yeah, just remember, this, this precise amount of code I just wrote is ex the exact example they give in the, uh, you know, it's, cool. I have a it's right here. Same exact thing. Um, and like I said, that's probably the most common way to serve the files in a folder. Oh, no, you copy over the whole page there? Yeah, thanks. Um, so the next program we want to write, and 
and the last program for the day. Sounds complicated, but it's actually easy. So what we want to do is create a static HTTP server. And perhaps it's named static-http. That serves the contents of the current working directory. This turns out to be a super useful thing. Sometimes I just have static HTML, and I just want to show it as a web page. And you can make a static HTTP server that does that. Let me show you how to do it with Python, because this is useful. It, Python has a module that lets you do this. So, just so we can see how it's supposed to work, and then we'll make it. Okay, so I'm going to go to the assets folder, and I'm going to run python-m simple HTTP server. That starts the simple HTTP server on 40,000. So, I go localhost 8,000. Sort of static files. So, we want to write that program in Go. Okay? I think we know everything to be able to write that program in Go. It's probably two lines of code. We'll see. <laughs> Everybody?